Hi everybody, Mike Pfeiffer with Pfeiffer Hobby Supply. Uh, today I'm going to do a little review on the uh, on some of the Tomix Fine Track. I don't know if any of you guys have tried using it. Um, uh, it's, it's a little bit on the expensive side. I don't have any exact prices, but I did get some of it so I could experiment with it. And uh, I'll give you the what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and try and tell you a little bit about the pieces that I got. I didn't get any straight pieces, but I'll get into that later. Um, but um, this is how it's packaged. Try and get this where you guys can see it. Um, it's packaged very nicely. It comes with some interesting things inside, and we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, this is what we're going to do is take a look at this and uh, some of the straight pieces or curved pieces and how this might benefit uh, using this track either by itself or in conjunction with Cato Unitrack. So let's take a look at the stuff. Okay, guys, we're going to start out. Uh, I'm going to show you this uh, turnout here. Uh, it doesn't actually tell you what size it is. Uh, it says hand 21 and 5 16 radius 15 degree. doesn't tell me squat. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I'm going to break this out of the package. I've already had it out of the package so that the instructions are here somewhere, but we'll act like we're taking it out for the first time, okay? We get it out of the package, um, and the initial thing that I kind of like about it, and actually I've already uh, removed it and, and put it where it goes, but this little this little piece, if I can get it in the camera, this little piece right here goes on the it's it's normally mounted over here, and it come you you break it off anyway. It it goes on either side of the turnout here in some little holes. And what it allows you to do is actually put a, a switch motor or switch stand, artificial one, out there on some ties. I think that's kind of a neat idea. Then you can ballast around it. Um, the other thing is in the package, you get the, um, of course they're Japanese style, but the, some of them look pretty close to American style. You get electric turnout controls here, left and right, and you get some switch stands. Uh, I haven't opened this package, but according to the instructions, uh, and I'll try and show you here. Some of them look like they're pretty close to American uh, pipes. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Some of them look like they're real close to American prototypes. And I think they would be adaptable. So anyway, that's kind of a nice feature. Unfortunately, I don't read Japanese. Uh, and by the way, it's a Japanese product made in China. Uh, so uh, anyway... <clears throat> pretty much designed a lot like a Kato, uh, with the difference being that on the back here, you're unable to remove the plastic part. You can change the joiner, but you can't. If you break this plastic part off, it's a done deal. Although the other side of the next piece would hook into here and probably make it stable enough, along with the joiners being separate, that you wouldn't have an issue. Or the or the track could actually be soldered together if you broke one of these. So you're not completely out of luck if you if that happens. The, I've plugged this one in and out many times so far, and it seems to be really rugged. You'll also notice that it has a PC board bottom as opposed to the metal bottom. Another thing is, you'll note this piece right here. This is actually the mechanism, and you can see the little throw bar right here, that throws the point. Seems to work well. I've run some cars, I've put a couple pieces of track on here and run some cars, just rolled them across here, it seems to work really well. Also you'll notice, and I don't know if I can get it in the picture, but there's some guardrails there right ahead of the points. I think that's a very good idea. Not very prototypical, but it's a dang good idea. <clears throat> this is also a, a polarity reversing turnout just like the Cato turnouts, even though it has two coils. and. The cool part, or one of the cool parts about this that I found is, watch this. You burn up the motor, you take it out and replace it. It just sits in there. This is the part that's actually the actuator, which nothing has nothing more than a piece of metal in there, and the two coils pull it, depending on polarity, pull it and push it forward or backward. 
pretty interesting design, and the fact that you can replace this might be a good thing. Uh, I don't know. That's if you can buy this piece separately, and that I don't know either. But anyway, the, the, the design and the concept is, is really straightforward and I, I think pretty well done. That just slips right in there. Now I'm going to move on to some comparisons between this and uh, Cato Track. Okay, during that brief uh, little intermission, I uh, put the switch stand on and you can kind of see how it looks. Looks to me pretty American. Close to it anyway. Even has a little uh, throw bar that goes underneath the track there. I think it looks pretty good. Anyways, that was just an experiment to see if I could do it. Although the first little throw bar that's in there that I uh, tried to put on immediately, immediately went flying across the room somewhere. Anyways, that's what it looks like. Uh, now to get back to what we were going to talk about. This is a Cato number four, and this is their turnout. Um, you can see their turnout is somewhat longer um, than Cato's. If I turn this upside down on their turnout and line up the tracks, it would appear that this is somewhere around a number six. You're going to have to take my word on that. Uh, they don't tell you exactly what it is, but um, <clears throat> when I was out at the fairgrounds uh, this past week, I did hold this to a Cato number six, and it's really, really close. It's dimensionally shorter, but the angles are um, uh, almost identical. If I had to say it was probably, could be a 5.5 or more, it's, a, it's very close to a six but it's definitely not interchangeable with a Cato turnout. Uh, but I would, I would, if I had to say, I would call this a number six turnout or number six compatible. Uh, one of the things you'll notice about this track, and I'll move away from the switch for a second. Here's a piece of curved track. This happens to be a 12 inch radius. This is a Cato 12 inch radius. You can see that there's quite a bit of difference in the scale width of the of the entire piece itself as well as the height and I can demonstrate that because this little piece here Atlas I mean uh, Atlas we're doing a video on Tomix and I'm talking about Cato. Okay, this is Cato what Cato calls an Atlas conversion track or a snap track conversion track. That's what we all know it as, and that's what guys here buy it as. They buy it as a piece of track to go to your flex track or whatever. What I found out by doing some stuff on the internet, definitely wasn't my deal, but I found out on the internet that this is not what this piece is designed for. It's what it's marketed for in the United States. In Japan, this piece is an adapter uh, to the Tomix track. If you look at the end of this, you can see my hand through that hole right there. Okay? That hole is there for a reason. That hole allows the Tomix joiner to go into it, and the width of that is the exact width to fit the Tomix track. As you can see, I mark my parts. This is a Cato part uh, 20045 is the adapter part. But nevertheless, in Japan, apparently, these are designed to adapt the, the Tomix track. And you can see the Tomix joiner goes right through the, or not the joiner, but the, the piece that holds the track together goes right through that hole. Fits perfectly. Now, if I put this to the side, you'll see that the... the the thickness, let me try and get it at the correct angle here. Now you can see the thickness or height difference of the two pieces of track. And what I'm leading to with this, as far as using this for uh, Cato applications is, we always have guys complaining, well, if I build a yard, I'm going to have to use flex track because the track needs to be lower. Well, 
if you want the track lower, and I realize this is a curved piece, if I put these two pieces together and I lay them down here, it, this slopes down to a lower level, uh, which in effect, if I had, if I had two, well, let me back up here, if I had two straight pieces together, this track, I would say, is at least 80 thousandths lower than, than this one. And it, when you look at it from the side, which we can't do very well here, but if I try and hold these like this, you can see that that Tomix track is considerably shorter and visually smaller, giving you the impression of a uh, siding track. Uh, I think that's kind of a cool thing because uh, what that tells me is you could come off of a Cato turnout, for instance, and we could actually hook this to it. And now this slopes down and, of course, it's a curve. But if this was a curve and you hook this piece to the curve, you could lower your, all your siding tracks. And if you wanted a whole yard lower, you lower off your mainline track, you start using the Tomix turnouts, and you build your ladder out of the Tomix turnouts, then all your yard is lower than the Cato track. Um, and that does look relatively prototypical. It, I haven't, you know, built an entire yard out of it, but it looks prototypical. The only thing, the only things that I notice, and I don't, I don't like, one of the things that I don't like that Tomix is doing, they're making the holes for you already. Cato doesn't make the holes for you already. You've got to poke through them and make your own holes. And I just think that that's probably what Tomix should have done, but they didn't. It's not horrible. Um, if I can back these up a little bit and get them in the light, it may not show up on the camera very well. Eh, it probably doesn't show up very well. But you can see that uh, Cato's ties, and these two 12 inches fit snugly right against each other, uh, the Cato ties are definitely black. The Tomix ties are definitely brown. Uh, I would say that the tie spacing is almost, I mean, very close to being identical. So you would you would hardly notice the difference in the tie spacing, um, but anyway, I just think it would make a nice effect, uh, and it's obviously very possible to mix the two types of track together. Another thing I wanted to get into real quickly is they also make these guys. Uh, Cato doesn't make any curved turnouts. I, I have also had this one out of the package. I've also attached it to some track and run some cars through it, and it seems to operate well, real well. It's designed identically to the uh, standard turnout. Uh, I, I do know that this guy right here, I think, is about 55 bucks, which, I don't know, it's in the $50 range. But anyway, it's kind of expensive. But if you need a curved turnout, there it is. Uh, you could adapt to this. Use the curve turnout, adapt back to the Cato, and I don't think that once you ballast along the edge that you would hardly notice the difference. Uh, just a thought. Um, while I haven't put any of this into practical use, I'm just trying to explain to you that uh, it does work well. Here's, here's the two 12s again, uh, just as a, as a demonstration, and an 11 inch on the inside of the Tomix. And you can see that it would actually work well. They're, they're very consistent uh, radiuses, and the 11-inch fits extremely well on the inside of the 12, and the Cato 12 is identical. It doesn't look it. If I put the, the Tomix track on top of the Cato, you can see that the, they're dimensionally identical. Uh, so I also think, and I don't know this to be a fact, but I would believe... If I could get one out here, and I haven't tried this, this will be a first on video. That's if I can get it done here. I'm not real sure this will work. I was going to try and just put this in here with the joiner only. Actually, you could, you could actually join these pieces of track. You'd have to trim either the Cato piece or trim, sacrifice the... Uh, the Tomix piece because they don't quite come together. But in theory, joiner just joiner wise, they would connect right together. You'd have to shim up the 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 uh, Tomix track. But but anyway, 
the idea is that there is some some stage of compatibility here. Um, if you thought you needed something that Tomix made and Cato didn't. So anyway, I guess to kind of wrap this up, overall, while I haven't run the turnouts on a, on a layout, they're very nice. I think these are in the $24 or $5 range. Uh, I don't know if, the, if it's advantageous or not advantageous. I like the fact that it has the little dummy switch stand. I think that's a real cool touch. Uh, I think it would look nice once they're, once these were ballasted along the edge. Um, some people will or won't like the fact that it's narrow, very narrow, but it does give you less to ballast, less to have to ballast along the edge, and it does afford you a little more view of the end of the ties, which is kind of a cool thing. If you didn't ballast along the in, if you didn't ballast the inside, the ballasting along the outside would really set it off, I believe. But um, anyway, that's kind of the do's and don'ts, and. Also, uh, one thing I didn't mention is that looking at the underside of it, uh, I think you could do all the identical things that you could do with the Cato Unitrack uh, as far as shortening. It does look like it's got some kind of small... Let me see. See that little ball of solder in there? I have no idea. I think all that does is keep the rail from moving in and out. I think it's just a stabilizer to keep the rail from pushing to one side or the other because there's not any in the rest of the entire length of it. So it looks to me like if we were to, to do as I do in my videos and slice this to decrease the angle of this particular piece, you could actually slide the roadbed in in one direction and, and then nip it off at the end, nip your rail off at the end. It would be a little tough because the joiner's in the way, but I think you, it could be done. Uh, so I think you could do everything you could do with the Cato turnouts here. Uh, one, one other thing is that these... Turnouts are already shorter, so if you make a yard ladder out of these, and considering the fact that I think that they're about a number six, you could actually have number six turnouts in your yard, and the, I think the track spacing would be closer together once you got a bunch of them hooked together. So anyway, uh, I probably have left a lot of things out because I had a lot of stuff in my head that just kind of went away, just like it always does. But uh, um, that's kind of a comparison and just a rundown of a few pieces of the Tomix Fine Track. And uh, I'd like some people to comment on this video that have used or are using the Tomix Fine Track. It appears to be a real good track system. Uh, unfortunately, they don't make quite make as many parts as Cato does, and Cato doesn't make some of the parts that Tomix does. So we're kind of in a dilemma there as far as that goes. But I think combining the two might be an advantage. Well, everybody. That's it. Um, kind of a short video, but I just wanted to introduce you guys to this track system. Um, uh, I think it has some advantages, as I said, and some disadvantages, but uh, overall, I'm really pleased with the way it looks. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and come back and see us anytime. Thanks for watching.